Thanks, you guys. Appreciate you coming out tonight. Uh, I'll share a few thoughts, and we'll bring out uh, Bald and uh, Gina, and we'll play our games and do the news and have a good time. Uh, I did uh, something I'm delighted with. I was uh, talking to my kids about 10 minutes ago when I was driving over here. They're in Chicago spending my money right now, so it's kind of a... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a thing, which is they see how fast they can burn through my money, and then I go out and, and dance and try to <laughs> replenish the coffers. But uh, I, said, uh, I said to my son, I'm heading to the office. And then I paused and I said, that's the stage. <laughs> and he went, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get the TV working over here in Chicago. So, But I thought it was powerful. <laughs> I, was, uh, I went to the Nike discount headquarters store today, and uh, I was thinking about, oh, let me get this cord whipped around here. I was, uh, I was thinking about Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that Netflix show, that series he did a couple of weeks ago, where the whole trailer was like the NFL combine, and then it just sort of morphed into a, a slave auction. <laughs> And so he was basically saying the NFL was essentially the slave trade. And I was thinking about it, and I thought, all right, there's a bunch of black guys with you know strong physical appearances working for the man. But I did have this thought. If a slave tore their ACL, do you think they would be hustling to rehab to get back into the field the next year to pick cotton? <laughs> I don't think so. So there's a slight difference. <laughs> Look, if a slave blew out their ACL, they'd probably be sidelined for a number of seasons. I don't think they'd be working with personal trainers to get back in the game. Also, uh, I took a picture at the Nike headquarters because I, uh, or the discount store, I wandered, you got that, doesn't, I wandered into the yoga section. <laughs> it's the Nike yoga collection. <laughs> now, for those listening, it's a guy who's missing his leg, stretching his prosthetic leg. <laughs> Except for he has no quads. So what exactly is this guy stretching out? <laughs> like, listen, I'm all for handy, capable, and wokeness and everything. But at a certain point, I got to stop in front of this. You can show the whole picture. Oh, we did. Yeah, we got the whole picture there. Right. I just stood in front of it. And I was like, what happened to his leg? Is, is this a yoga injury? <laughs> is this a veteran who took up yoga after his tour in Iraq? Or did yoga cause this? <laughs> and then he's standing and he's stretching. He's got the one leg. He's got the prosthetic leg out front. Shouldn't the fake leg be the base leg and then you take the <laughs> leg that actually has muscles to stretch in it and put that one out front? And I don't know what's going on with everyone. Every commercial I see where someone's got the prosthetic limbs. Why are you fuckers wearing shorts? <laughs> How about some bell bottoms? I don't need to know about your grief. I really don't. Put on some fucking slacks and some boots and we'll, I'll never be the wiser. <laughs> now I have to think, what the fuck did this guy do to lose his leg? <clears throat> Speaking of uh, handicap, I was upset. Now, you guys will just have to take my word for it, but uh, I used to do a lot of building. I used to do a lot of, like, tenant improvement work, you know, commercial stuff. And the green room on this club is insanely small, very small. It's a very small green room. But I started noticing that the bathroom that is in the green room is huge. And I kept walking from the miniature green room, banging elbows with Brian and Gina and Mike, and our, our, we had some barbecue last night, so it took up some room. There was no place to put any of the barbecue. 
uh, Dylan, my opener for the late show, is a husky fella, so he wasn't helping the cause back there. <laughs> but I kept going into the bathroom, and the bathroom is actually bigger than the green room is. And I'm like, what the fuck? Who would design a room where the bathroom took up two-thirds of the actual footprint of the room, and then the room itself was miniature? And then... I noticed the handicap rails in the bathroom, and then I was like, oh, this is to code. See, you don't have a code for a green room, you have a code for a bathroom that's inside a green room, and so the bathroom is twice as big as the green room because that's the code, and I thought to myself, all right, so, Maybe a comic who's confined to a wheelchair or practicing yoga <laughs> needs to use the bathroom. But then I looked up at the wall and I saw all the illustrious comedians who have come before me in this club. Not a one in a wheelchair. <laughs> this, my friends, is indicative of the time we're living in. All of us have to suffer in a cramped green room on the off chance that Ironside, the comedian, is ever going to perform at this fucking club. <laughs> this club with the 33 stairs just to get to the fucking green room. But oh, we should all suffer. All the able-bodied people should suffer. It's called a handicap, ladies and gentlemen. Let's treat it that way. <laughs> Well, life ain't gonna be easy. You don't get all the room you want to take a shit. <laughs> Just put a hole in that wheelchair and put the dog bag under there. And, every, and the world will become your handicapped bathroom. I was uh, driving, when we were driving to the uh, Nike campus or the discount store, it's, kind of, it's, it's, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes out of town. A lot of freeway driving. Noticed a lot of uh, tents and structures built by the side of the freeway, which, which bugged me. But I also noticed that in L.A., that's what we have as well. Although you guys in Portland, they seem to really love the side of the freeway. L.A. is a little more under the freeway overpass or down the side street or on the cul-de-sac, but a lot of freeway camping. I'm not sure what that is, but I'll tell you what bumped me. Portland is beautiful, and everything is green, and everything is lovely, and then you see the big blue visqueen uh, plastic scrap and the guy's homesteading over there and he's got a little miniature Ponderosa. He's got, a, he's got his bike and he's got, the, the, the ones I hate the most are the kids' toys, you know what I mean? He's got a little weird three-year-old kids' castle set up over there. <laughs> And it doesn't bother me when I see it in L.A. because L.A. is just a burnt hellscape. <laughs> it's all just dirt and scorched earth and shopping carts everywhere. So the guy pitching the tent by the side of the freeway is kind of a lateral move emotionally for me. But <laughs> you guys have this place that looks like Narnia with a bunch of insane fucked up people shitting by the side of the freeway. <laughs> I'm sure your city leaders are very interested in recycling and trash and all. There is more shit and trash and garbage by the side of everything. So the same person who resides over the city who'd get on your ass if you threw an aluminum can in the wrong receptacle drives by mountains of garbage created by man by the side of the freeway every day and doesn't think twice. Oh, they're noble. That's a noble endeavor. Let's see, what else did I write down here? I don't know why, but I thought about this today. Something uh, you never, you never, you, you never, uh, there's two things. You, you want to hear a coach say this about you. You want to hear a coach go, I've been coaching 
for 37 years, and I've never seen anything like, and then your name would be in there, right? But what you don't want to hear is, I've been in law enforcement for 37 years, <laughs> and then your name. That's not what you want. You're, you want your name after the coach. Random thought I wrote down. <laughs> um, I have a, uh, I was walking, we walked uh, about two miles from the hotel into uh, Portland. I did know, I will say this, and I'll, I'll show you a picture in a second, but um, weird little thought. You guys are filled with red left turn arrows. <laughs> Mike August, God bless him, drove through 71 of these things in a 20 minute period. <laughs> he, he he drives like, like a cab driver with a pregnant woman in the back whose water just bursts. That's how Mike drives. But green, the light turns green, the arrow is red. Even though you can see no cars are coming, you are not permitted by law to turn left. Although, fuck it, do it anyway. I do it every single place I go. I've now exported this behavior into Portland. But I started... Noticing, you know, if you travel around to other towns, they will have a blinking yellow uh, light that says, go ahead, that, you'll, you'll get a blinking arrow, or the arrow never turns red. I started noticing that the more progressive the town, the more red arrows were in that town. <laughs> you in Los Angeles have the most per capita red arrows. It's like seven red arrows for every citizen who lives in Portland. <laughs> and I thought, I wonder if it's because these assholes in these towns love telling you what to do. <laughs> no arrows for the homeless, but... Uh, you, my friend, you, we shall tell what to do. Uh, please just drive through these things. You know, green light, red arrow, make sure there's no cars coming, do it. You'll never get a fucking ticket. Been doing it for 25 years. <laughs> Dawson, do you have a, I have. You'll never get a ticket, because if the cop ain't behind you, you're not getting a ticket. Just look up there. All right, did, uh, do we have that picture? I took a, we went to a diner in, in Portland. <laughs> And we had the sign so proudly displayed in the window. It's the American flag, if you're listening at home, but with a twist. In our America, all people are equal. Love wins. I don't know how you guarantee such a boast. Love winning. I don't, I feel like if, 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 if in my life, if love would tie, I would consider it a victory. <laughs> Black Lives Matter, immigrants and refugees are welcome, disabilities are respected, unless Corolla gets a microphone and hits the stage. <laughs> That's on the back. Women are in charge of their bodies. Well, good for them. <laughs> That's nice. I feel like you should have dominion over your own body, ladies. People and planet are valued over profit. So says the place that's selling shit for, uh, that's their business. You don't come in there and just take eggs. They sell them to you. <laughs> Diversity is celebrated, but they never really explain what the celebration is. Is it a jig? Is it a dance? <laughs> sound off those air horns when a Chicano guy comes in. I... <laughs> They never really explain what the rules of celebrating diversity is, you pompous fucking asses. Ugh. Ugh. God, I'd be a horrible employee of that diner in Portland. I'd be pushing hard, like they'd be like, we want to get our blowhard diversity flag to put in the window. I'd be like, uh, how about just the good old fashioned, no shoes, no shirt, no service? <laughs> no. No, we're going to do the diversity flag. How about gas, grass, or ass? Nobody eats for free. Do you see what I did there? Hey, we're set on our blowhardy diversity flag. All right, how about the updated toke, coke, or poke? <laughs> Nobody eats for free. That'd be funny, right? No, we're not going to pool our tips and share it with you, Corolla. 
All right, let's see. I wrote down one more thing. I can feel it. <laughs> Talked about that. Oh, let's see. Yeah, freeway, garbage. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I'm tapped out of jokes. <laughs> Those are all my Portland thoughts. Shall we get started with the show? <laughs> Shall we bring up Gina Grad and Bald Brian? Here they are, everybody. Oh, did I take your mic? Yeah. Sorry, grab this uh, other microphone here, Gina, and Thank see how that, uh, that works for you. Now, you guys, uh, you went to the Nike store as well, right? Indeed. No sales tax, Portland! Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right, yeah. That's great. Yeah, I, 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 there is that thing where you buy stuff, when you do stuff in, you know, uh, California, it's, I don't know, amongst the highest, it's about 10% or whatever yep. it is. You have to kind of, you have to wait for them to calculate what is being added on, but whatever the sticker was, that's whatever you pay. That was awesome. So you went there, you went nuts. Went fucking crazy. Yeah. Got a few last minute Christmas presents that I absolutely, for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then like a, a half a shoe and a, a shorts for the boys. Mm, yeah, like the uh, one that the yoga guys got. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Did, uh, you know what I would do if I had the prosthetic uh, limbs like that guy? <laughs> Please. I would... Um, <clears throat> I'd wear the shorts like they do now. Everyone's yeah. showing off their prosthetic right. limbs. And uh, I also feel like we kind of moved backwards. When I was a kid, prosthetic limbs used to be like flesh colored and they would attempt <laughs> some semblance of an actual limb. Yes. Now it's just all carbon There's fiber titanium and titanium there. and everything. But I'll tell you what I would do. If I was missing one leg and I had the prosthetic limb on like the guy in the yoga picture had and I was wearing my shorts, <laughs> every once in a while I would put a walking boot on the prosthetic limb. Oh yeah, as though, as though you tore your Achilles. Yeah, I just, I just, you rolled your I ankle. I just do that. <laughs> and then I'd freak everyone the fuck out because they'd be like, what? Uh, excuse me, but why? I don't go, you don't think you can roll a prosthetic yeah. ankle, bitch? I'm every bit as human as you are. And they'd go, no, no. They'd get really defensive really bad. Get this thing off and I kick your fucking kick ass. Kick your fucking ass. <laughs> Doctor says another seven weeks, then rehab. Hot, just, cold, compresses, keep the swelling down. You can't just take it to the shop? Yeah, no, oh. no, no, come on. <laughs> you got to keep that going, go to physical therapy with it. Yeah, put the fucking boot on. That's right. Hand it to her, I'm tired, you do it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you take the leg off yeah. and give it to the physical yeah. therapist. <laughs> All right, I'm going to run errands. <laughs> Now, last time I ran errands, you're supposed to be working on my prosthetic limb. I saw you smoking behind the clinic. So That's let's right. not have that shit happen That's again. That's not how I rehab. 50 minutes on the clock. Let's go. Guys with prosthetic legs have come as far as bald guys. I made the point back in the day in the movies. It was the idiot or the dork or the nerd. Yes, now back in the day. Now it's and it's a fucking rock. Yes. Yeah. A guy comes to bat in a softball game with a fucking prosthetic leg. He's putting it out of the park. Well, yeah, in the in the commercial. Commercial for sure. <laughs> I'm pitching. That's when I serve up the bean ball. <laughs> but only for the prosthetic sure. limb. You know what I mean? Lean into it. <laughs> well, you're right in that back in the day, the bald guys were kind of the villains, and the guys missing the limbs were the villains, too. Right. Now they're the heroes. Well, our man. Did you, uh, so you bought a bunch of stuff, yeah. and then what? And then I went to my childhood home, and what I thought was going to be this like idyllic neighborhood and tigered and oh my god it's a rock wall painting that shit somebody let that street go <laughs> I we have a picture it was really cute that's my that was my house that's where I lived. Little Gina it's lived a big there. Garage. Thank you very much. Yeah, a lot of garage. Uh, that's what I look like leaning against the doorway. Yeah. And um, it was so funny because we peeked inside, and I thought someone would call the cops, but there was nothing in there. And I was like, well, that's weird, because on the Zillow and Redfin, it's like a beautifully staged house. Uh -huh. Guess what it said in fine print? Virtually staged. 
They fucking Virtually photoshopped changed. the couch in there. Wow. Oh, interesting. It was crazy. Do they have to disclose that? <laughs> As though someone died on the couch, and on the then, virtual couch. Yeah, you guys stage this. Anyway, I've done this. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird process. I have staged a house I'm trying to sell. And the thing about staging is... You usually try to sell the house first, mm -hmm. and then it doesn't sell, right. and you're not getting the money you want for the house, and then the realtor says, man, you gotta come down maybe 150 grand, and you're fucked, and then they go, and we need to stage it, which is another 28 grand, mm -hmm. and if it, it, so it's like this crazy deal with the devil, like do I spend, uh -huh. do I throw more money at this thing, but the virtually I could do that on my phone. Is yeah. interesting, and yeah. I, if you're looking at pictures, you could get the idea. But how long before <laughs> Tinder goes virtual? <laughs> you know, like uh, I've virtually staged my junk, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it could look like. All <laughs> this could be yours. <laughs> you could put some of the Easter eggs in your Zillow listing. Yeah, that's right. Hood in the back. <laughs> yes. So, so it, was, it was. It's for sale. It's for sale. Uh, and speaking of which, I thought... Wait, what is yeah. the price? Well, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. L.A., you know, it's like things are a million, two million that you're like, yeah, you're leveling it and you're just buying it for the dirt. This house has a lot of gall because this is not a sought-after street from what I could tell. And by the way, our old neighbors were still there, scared the shit out of them, said who I was, and then they squealed, but they still locked the door. Mm -hmm. So they talked to me through the door. Um, but this is not like a, a fancy neighborhood by any stretch, they wanted $750,000. Well, it's a historical landmark. <laughs> yeah. Come on. For a split, and they just came down, like you said, 150, they, now it says, fine, 600. $600,000 for this POS? Is it, what's it about, 17, 1800 yes, square foot? Yes, 1800, I think. Well, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> and look, I have, I'm very nostalgic and I think it's lovely, but I wouldn't pay $600,000 for this house. Is Portland going up that much? It's not, it's not caught LA, Ooh. but it's, it's getting expensive, yeah, right? Well, it can. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Brian, what'd you do? I went to see The Matrix. What? Yeah, oh, the new Matrix movie. Only in Portland. Yeah. Portland. There's an IMAX theater down the street from mm -hmm. our hotel uh -huh. at the Lloyd Center, I guess, is the mall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I went there. Movie. It's easily a top three Matrix movie. Uh -huh, out of four. <laughs> that's, that's not good. Easily. I mean, you, you can't argue that, guys. Mm. It's okay. It's hit and miss. It's got some good things. It's got some bad things, too. Uh, on the way back, uh, Dawson, I sent you a picture. It's not that important. But uh, walk through the mall, which was weird. It was odd. At least half the stores were closed. Yeah. But there were kids ice skating. It was adorable. Oh, was nice. The whole ice skating rink. Were they closed or were they boarded up? There we don't were, want any trouble closed. There were a lot that were closed. And there were a lot that were Mall's empty. Mm. Oh, is it real? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Mall's bankrupt. It's uh, <laughs> hard to see why. So uh, it was okay. The Matrix 4. Is it 4? Yeah. It was good. Uh, it's tight. It's, it's I. Keanu Reeves, man, I'm, I'm telling you, that guy's had a resurgence, oh. a big time. I was sitting with him. I, I remember clearly... We're doing the uh, Toyota Celebrity Grand Prix of Long Beach or whatever. We're doing that car race, that celebrity car race. It must have been about seven or eight years ago. And they have a, a trailer for the drivers to change in. So it's it's in the infield of the track. They have the... the, the mobile trailer, everyone has a locker, you keep your fire suit and your gloves, helmet and everything like that. And at some point, there was some driver's meeting that Keanu and I were not aware of, and everyone was inside at the driver's meeting, and they were kind of looking for us, because they do a head count. And he and I just sat in this trailer for half an hour. The man has B.O., I will tell you. <laughs> he and, strikes me as very natural. And, and, and the, uh, a musk, though. Yeah. A musk, the, a, a powerful musk. And with that, by the way, when you're racing an automobile and you take the fire suit off, the musk gets weaponized. Right. Like, it is a lot <laughs> more musk. And he was sitting around, this was like, I don't know, seven years ago. And he was kind of telling me, like, eh, I'm not up to much. I got a couple of projects I'm trying to get off the ground. It's telling me the story of a movie he was thinking about, about being on a spaceship and falling asleep and going back into time and whatever. And it's like... 
I actually felt bad for him for like 10 minutes. Why? So I was like, hey, it's Keanu Reeves. He's got nothing, he's not, he's got nothing going on in his world. He's a star, but he's he's past yeah, his prime. He's that's that's what then I was thinking. And along came John Wick. And then along came uh, Wick, and here we are today. All right, Wait, so. Wait, I'm sorry. Yes. We, we can't go further until I ask. Um, in your imagination, when we're talking like sexy hobo power, who has a more pungent musk? Keanu Reeves or Matthew McConaughey? Oh. Uh, I've not sniffed Matthew McConaughey <laughs> up close. I've interviewed him. Uh, but that's the whole thing. The musk on a good-looking, uh. muscular man Oof. is actually an aphrodisiac. They know it. And on any one of you guys in the first <laughs> row, it, it, that's called a clit killer. <laughs> Uh, I may what, have just what, caught, what about I mean, the fellow wearing the Mariah Carey sweater? Uh, clit killer. <laughs> killer of clits. <laughs> I, I hope I just coined that phrase because uh, the, the boner killer's been yeah. around for a while, but I argue it. it's a two-way street. I think you're right. And if you guys can kill a boner, I can kill a clit. If you must. I look at myself as a clit killer. Yeah, I wouldn't go around bragging about that. Think, yeah. <laughs> I think that was ice T's big hit. Clit killer! Clit killer. <laughs> All right, let's see, especially during the holidays, if we can work that into conversations. <laughs> because the only way something really takes off, I mean, I can tweet about it till my thumbs are blue, but it's all of you. <laughs> At home, in front of the fire, next to the hearth, the grandkids are coming in. You know what I mean? Fruitcake again? Grandma's such a clit killer. Right, right. That's a perfect, right. perfect example. Perfect example. <laughs> oh, we got eggnog. Well, where's we're out of rum. Oh, oh. what a clit killer! <laughs> Hashtag clit killer. <laughs> this turkey's dry. <laughs> clit killer. <laughs> All of you. And look, I'm not saying do it for years. I'm saying just maybe the next two or three holiday seasons, yeah. just so get it, it could get some traction, yeah. and then be attributed to me. You I know like what it. I mean? I like it. Mm -hmm. It could be Portland's hella. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> That'll be like my here comes the judge right. or what Who, you talk about, Willis. Who's ready for a click killing good time? Oh, Corolla, yeah. <laughs> Dawson, work that in the intro. <laughs> yeah, could you do that? I mean, it could be my get her done, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I tell a joke, kill that clit. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Jay, boy, that's a click yeah. killer right there, ain't it? <laughs> Yeah, that could be my thing. That could be my legacy. Yeah. But again, it's up to every one of you. <laughs> All right, shall we, uh, shall we play our, uh, we got blah, blah, blah yeah. to play. You guys know how this game, well, it's, 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 in the, it's in the intro. It's explained in the intro. It's time for Blah, Blah, Blah. The game where we match the celebrity with their retarded online rant. Let's play. Lawyering up is what members of organized cartels do. Using due process as a holding action. Lose, appeal, lose, appeal. Run out the clock. This is how Trump and his cronies are dealing with their political afterlives. Trump is never going to jail. He deserves to, but he's rich and powerful instead of poor and black. Ooh. Welcome to America. Is it Rob Reiner? <laughs> <laughs> Bette Midler? Ooh. Or Stephen King? Ooh. This is weird. Yeah, this is sort of a murderer's row of blah, blah, blah. What is Stephen King doing? Although he's been great now. He doesn't like Trump, I'll tell you that much. Rob is a, Rob Reiner's a very sweet man, but he gets very animated yes, when, it, when it comes to uh, Trump. Mm. Well, uh, what would happen? Uh, there's a lot of, you know, Bette Midler's very angry, Trump. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of celebs, you know. He's, he's been out for a year now. But what do you think would happen if Trump died of a massive coronary, like on the golf course in like three months? 
Do you well, think they're disappointed people? Not that he died, right. that he didn't get charged for the crime. <laughs> but do you think Bette Midler would be like, exhume his body and put him on trial? Yes. If he was a black man, we'd pull that corpse right down to the courthouse and go full weekend at Bernie's on. That's him. right. Yes. All right. So this is tough. It, I, it, like I said, Rob Reiner's a very soft-spoken kind of, a, he's a sweet, funny gentleman, so you wonder, but he can, it can bring out his ire. Bette Midler's crazy. I think she recently had to apologize to the citizens of West Virginia. What? Yeah, she was, she was pissed <laughs> off about Joe Manchin, and she was like, all you West Virginians, she basically called them white trash drug addicts and <laughs> stuff, and, then, and she had to apologize. Like, she got so much shit for calling them all junkies. That, uh, but, and then there's King. I, I don't know. Brian, what do you think? I'll go Rob Reiner. Go Reiner? Yeah. Uh, they all hate Trump, I know that. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, I feel like it's a little... I was going to say bet, but when I think back on it, it's a little mansplainy, like, oh, do tell us how the justice system works. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go Stephen King. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> Stephen King. God, I don't know. All right. I want to know what Stephen King is doing up there, but I do <laughs> this every time. I'm going Bette Midler. We'll just go... We'll go yeah. all three. The blog belongs to Stephen King. Oh, damn it. I knew it. Do I know my well actually yeah. or not? Little clit killer. <laughs> you. <laughs> See what um, we did? A message for Pope Francis. I was talking to a friend of mine who happens to be an Irish priest who has a black parish. He's in a lot of pain because he feels that the church has not said anything definitively about standing with its black parishioners or saying, yes, black lives matter and brown lives matter. He was very upset because he felt that Jesus's work was not being done here. I wonder if there is something that you might be able to do to send the message that the Catholic church knows black lives matter. It knows there is no difference between a black Catholic and a white Catholic or a Hispanic Catholic. That everyone that God has in his hands matter. Maybe you could put in some Jesus. words of encouragement it's to people going. of color in the Catholic what Church. A conversation. And say that you stand with them and the church will not tolerate black folks being treated any differently than anyone else. How many characters do you get in Twitter? Yeah. This is a, this is a, a thread. <laughs> All right. Is it Whoopi Goldberg? Mm. Sonny Hostin? Mm. Or Rosie O'Donnell? Mm. Ooh, red herring. Uh, by the way, wh- this poor priest, like, when he sees one of these three coming at him, doesn't he have to just cross the street like, oh, not another fucking earful about Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love that the the new world order is, um, can you single out one ethnicity so we can talk about all ethnicities being the same in your eyes? Mm. Which is kind of a fucked up math, you know what I mean? Like, just saying all of God's children and then talking about the Ten Commandments, not the uh, black version or the Hispanic version (laughs) of the Ten Commandments. Just... Speaking in general about leading a good life and, and, you know, not coveting your neighbor's oxen. This notion of, well, let's pull out a group and focus on that one group and yell at them we're all the same. Right. It's a little counterintuitive, but all right. Do you think uh, Whoopi... I don't know. This feels too religious for Whoopi. I, I feel like she's well, an Well, she had a friend who's a... Who, you know what I mean? Well, Dustin, did it start out with something like Dear Pope... De- a message for Pope Francis. I'm going to say it's Whoopi and guess that she thought that she was actually writing a letter to the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> Full dear, stop. Dear Pope, this yeah. year I'd like more methadone for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe she yeah. thinks she's writing this is to a Santa. Tag, this is a PS to her, uh, her letter. All right, you go Whoopi. What do you think? I think that... This sounds like, okay, Sonny and Whoopi are both on the same show, but I right. don't think anyone's really allowed to voice their opinion except Whoopi. Like, mm-hmm. Whoopi's Whoopi. Everyone else mm-hmm. is like, you go, girl. Right. So I think Sonny will take to the internet to get her point across, so I'll say Sonny. Mm, yeah. I mean, I don't know what the, 
I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, we're traditionally Catholic Church, not big fans of the gays, mm. right? I've heard that. But <laughs> you don't. And I know when they say gay, they say they mean all of God's gay creatures. Right. But they're talking about sucking cock. <laughs> I know and what you, they're thinking. You know which way the wind's a, blowing. They, they do a great job of protecting the priests. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't oh, hear too them. soon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear them focus too much on the uh, the, the box munching. It's right. more the pulse the click munching. Killing. <laughs> so I don't know if they have a problem with Rosie. You they know, leave the click killers alone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm going sunny for that reason as well. The blog belongs to Whoopi Goldberg. Oh! Yes. Yeah. Interesting. That's why I have to play the game. <laughs> There's a huge problem that we can force a $300 million recall because a governor ate at French Laundry. But we have no recourse when a president grifts more than he breathes, cages kids, leads an insurrection, combats a pandemic with suggesting bleach drinking, and undermines democracy. All the hits. Is it Josh Gad, Barbara Streisand, mm. or Alyssa Milano? Oh, a perennial favorite. All right, so drinking the bleach, kids in cages, these are, these are big hits, as, yeah. as Brian said. Yeah. But the, the intellectually, the, he didn't put people in cages. He didn't tell people to drink bleach. If you if you look behind the curtain a little bit, this feels a little on the surface. It feels too straightforward. I, I Josh Gad, I feel intellectually, well, I would be shocked who is Josh Gad. You would be shocked. I'd be shocked. And so now we're just we're down to Babs, and we're down to um, Alyssa. Alyssa, I I do feel. I do feel like this would be the time for me to uh, quickly tell you the uh, James Brolin uh, Ford Raptor story, which is, but I, I really mean it. If you think about like how, how difficult it's going to be for us to solve global warming, because you go, we got to get people out of those internal combustion vehicles, or we got to get them into a Prius, or we got to get them into a Tesla or something, we got to get them into an electric car, and until we can get enough Americans to shift from one to the other. But I've interviewed Babs's husband, the great uh, James Brolin, who drives a Ford Raptor. <laughs> Which is an off-road trophy truck, <laughs> which essentially gets seven miles to the gallon. And he was very keen to point out to me that he didn't want the new model because that had the more fuel-efficient V6 with the turbos on it. He wanted the old-school, naturally aspirated V8, which got worse mileage than the fucking V6. So how are we going to solve this conundrum if the woman, uh, I should say the man who the woman supports, meaning Babs, yeah. I'm guessing she's keeping the lights on over there in Malibu, uh, can't convince him or coach or cajole yeah. him into getting an electric yeah. vehicle. Now, I, I figure he parks the Raptor up PCH about a quarter mile, <laughs> hops into his <laughs> Nissan Leaf, tells Babs he's going uh, to the Whole Foods to grab some uh, sprouted seven grain bread, yeah. and then hops in the Raptor and does donuts over Indian burial ground up in the Malibu State Park. <laughs> Sorry, Brian, what were you going to say? I agree. <laughs> it's a real stalemate. It feels Alyssa Milano-y. She's very on the surface. I could go coin flip with those two. I'll go Barbara Streisand. I think you guys are sleeping on Olaf. I think he's feisty. He's fired up. And uh, I'm going to go Josh Gad. And then, then there's always this one. Why is he on this list? Yes, indeed. But I'm still going, this sounds like Alyssa Milano, so I'll go Alyssa Milano. The blog belongs to Josh Gad. Oh, wow. Come on. I have a PhD in mansplaining. Wow. I can find them anywhere. What a glit killer. <laughs> Outrageous. <laughs> 
isn't he overdue to drop like 90 pounds? I mean, isn't that what you do? Yeah. He's got, is he going to go full Adele yeah. at some point? And Jonah Hill did Jonah it. Jonah Hill, yeah. What? Jonah Hill did it. Jonah Hill? He dropped a ton of weight. Oh, yeah. he did? Yeah. But he was always fittish, right? What? Excuse me? Oh, Jonah, Jonah Hill. Hill. Oh, sorry. Someone else. Sorry. No, I'm thinking of the Jonas Brothers. Oh. That was like, <laughs> Jonas. <laughs> So I was thinking of Joe Jonas or something. I got too many fucking C-listers in my head. Jonah Hill. Yeah, Jonah Hill made the move. Right. I, he's going to make the move, right? Yeah. And then go back. And then go back. Uh. And then sit down and do an interview about how he loved himself in both bodies. That is such bullshit. I pack on 12 pounds, I hate myself. And you should all hate yourself as well. If I pack on 12 pounds, leave yourself alone. I like how you're pre-angry at Josh Gap for losing the weight. For losing the weight. He should lose that weight. But just so we can see. And it, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. Right. Some people lose all the weight and it doesn't work on them. It worked on Adele. Yeah. She just looks like That's a great. better version of right. her. Sometimes guys get, you know, they look like a, a used condom on a pencil or something. <laughs> like it's, it's not, a, it's a, you know it's who a it, clit killer, man. You know who it didn't work on? Hmm. Uh, the weatherman. Al Roker. Al Roker. Yeah, Al he needs Roker. to go back. Yeah, he, he needs to head back that way. <laughs> All right. I know it's days you are frustrated. Hold on, what do I have? A goose egg up here? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Gina's got two, bald has one. All right. I know it's days you are frustrated and don't feel inspired, so you start saying it will never happen for you. Understand, words are powerful. That's why even though, even through hard times, you must keep speaking that what you are working on will eventually be a success. Speak it into fruition. Even though you may be going through some rough times, mentally, financially, physically, just say this is only temporary. Words are so powerful. You are stronger than you know. That's why you are still here, so get ready for better days. Is it Missy Elliott? Whoa. Pharrell? Who? Or Alicia Keys? Hey, I don't want to keep harping on this clit killer thing, but... <laughs> I, I'd like it to be my let's go Brandon. You know what I mean? Like something, you know, we could hashtag it. <laughs> we could, it would sweep the nation. And it'd be good for Josh Gad or whoever because... When Biden gets up there and everyone starts yelling, let's go, Brandon, if Trump makes a speech, we could break into the clit yeah, killer right. chant I like at that, that. point. I like that. And, you know, it's, it's turnabout is fair play. Sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> they just spitball in here in front of y'all, but that's just how my mind works, man. I can't shut it off, you know. <laughs> I'm in my office right now, the stage, you know what I mean? This is, this is my office. That's right, okay? the stage. It's my office, yeah. the stage. You well, this guys. is... You guys go to cramp cubicles. I go to the stage. This is my office. Okay. I can't. Sh- Sorry. It's like the movie you watched the other night, Inception. Nothing's more powerful than an idea. That's right. That's right. Right. An idea's taking a hold. I can't get rid of it. Yeah. I wish I had the sound up. <laughs> <laughs> so I miss so much when you the sound lot, is down. Yeah. But the, visually, it was powerful. <laughs> All right. So it's uh, Missy Elliott and. Uh, it she- wasn't that blowhardy, honestly. I mean, it was a little, you know, pie in the sky, but it wasn't. It's so dopey. But isn't it like someone just filled a hamper full of cliches yes. and yeah. just sort yeah. of scattered That's them on the ground? Yes. yes. You're all powerful. We're all. I don't buy any of that. First off, I look at myself as better than most all of you. <laughs> most. That leaves a couple of you with the option of thinking I'm not talking about you, but I am talking about you. Because when I say most, I mean all, but I still say most. Because it gives you, you know, a little glimmer Stay of humble. hope. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like this thing where everyone is powerful and everyone's strong and everyone's a warrior. Because that means none of, none us, of us are. I don't, yeah. I don't like that. I want to live in the middle. Is she Missy Misdemeanor? At least, at least she was. I don't know. I'm not up on the current uh, nomenclature. I wonder if she has like a brother named Frank. 
the felony. Who has to go by felony. <laughs> just sort of yeah. de facto, you know? Elliot. I met your sister, Missy, oh. Miss Amina Elliot, and then Frank. Oh, Jesus, what <laughs> oh, happened? Geez. Yeah, that's going to be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hide in my basement until this whole thing blows over, Frank? You know Victor the Violation? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, what do you think, Gina Grad? I have no clue. It was it was like a cheer that like a sixth grade girl writes for homecoming for the homecoming football mm-hmm. game. So how about I don't know, let's go Alicia Keys. Yeah, I, I feel she's she likes some power. What do you think? If there are any black people here, I'd ask them, but I'll just go with Pharrell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wait, we go into the kitchen and see if I can rustle one up. Hey, you do what you gotta do, man. <laughs> Pharrell. Pharrell. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it feels Alicia Keys uh, to me as well. The blog belongs to Missy Elliott. No! Oh! <laughs> Damn it. So I should have done that just to not pick the one That's you picked exactly to try to right. scratch my way you back really in this game. You really killed that clip. <laughs> this is our last one. <laughs> All right, this this one's worth three. (laughs) Two-headed monster trolls, Bette Midler and Joy Behar, have been on a rampage ever since the high school prom prom king quarterback rejected their money offers to dance with them. Really angry women with no justification. Is it James Woods? (laughs) Randy Quaid. Or Ted Nugent. This is a strong this is good. category. This is diabolical. Because that made no sense. We all had no idea what was right. going on. Right. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, uh, I feel like James puts it together a little better. Do you want to hear it again? Because now we know yeah, what we're doing. Yeah, let's hear it with. again now. It, it'll, help, it'll help us. Two-headed monster trolls, Bette Midler and Joy Behar, have been on a rampage since the high school prom king slash quarterback rejected their money offers to dance with them. Really angry women with no justification. (laughs) I have a very strong feeling about this. Does this person think they were rich in high school so they had to pay off the prom king to dance with them? (laughs) What this, do you think? This, to me, feels wholly like the Motor City Madman. Yeah. Mm. This is very Ted Nugent. Mm. Okay. Who I, who I enjoy, by the way. When he was on the show, that was one of the highlights of my life. Yeah, he, he can talk, uh, Ted. What do you think, Brian? Do we have any more after this, Dawson? That was the last one. We have a uh, tiebreaker if needed. I, I think it's Nugent, too, but I got to go for something else for the points, so I'll go with Woods. Well, just to cover myself, I think it's Woods and Nugent, but I'm going to go Quaid <laughs> because <laughs> savvy, savvy. I need to make up a point here. So I'm going with Randy Quaid. Oh, uh, 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 actually, we should play this game one day, which is what actor has turned into a character he has played. If you watch oh, wow. Independence Day... <laughs> If you watch well, Independence Day uh, 128 times like I have, you'll realize that uh, Randy Quaid, Quaid has turned yeah, that's into that's a strong his contender. Character. Right. Steven Seagal's up there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, but I mean, he, at least he played this guy, mm. you know. Lieutenant he, Dan? Gary yeah. Sinise? <laughs> <laughs> he was in that yoga thing. Okay. <laughs> Who who's the winner or do we have a tie? The blog belongs to Randy Quaid. God damn it! Last one to win takes the game, man. Gina Grad with the win. Yeah, thank you. Until next time, keep your fingers on your keyboards and your heads up your asses so we can play another round of blah blah blah. All right, Gina, you want to uh, whip out your news and roll into that? Some I celebratory know. news. You should be prepared. News with Gina Grad, breaking viral, weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gina Grad, stuff they saw on TMZ. Joe Biden, coming out. Big news with Gina, Gina Grad. The news. 
Mornings with Gina Grad. By the way, I'm going to be up all night tonight thinking about this. If I don't just say it, Brian and I had a real brief conversation about it in the back. If you think you see my nipple tonight, you don't. I burn myself with a GD curling iron. Oh, <laughs> sweet. Yeah. And yeah, that would be a very high nipple placement, but I promise you, you don't see it. <laughs> Mine's like way down here. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Um, oh, this old chestnut. Here we go. A British collector of World War II military artifacts recently rushed himself to the hospital for a problem he had with his arsenal. Um, emergency room doctors had to call in a bomb squad after the man showed up with a World War II era anti-tank shell lodged in his rectum. Oh. But here comes the best part. He explained to the doctors that he had been moving some items in his collection when he, when he fell and landed on the 57 millimeter artillery shell, which became stuck in his butt. Oops. The police and a bomb squad arrived to assure the safe removal of the device, which was found to be inert and frankly posed no risk at this point to anyone but him. Well, nothing wedged in your ass is inert. That's what my grandfather, <laughs> my grandfather shared that wisdom more with you know. me when I was just a knee height of a weevil. Right. He said, if it's in your ass, it's not inert. Don't be fooled. You, Adam, you watch a little more History Channel than I do. Mm -hmm. What is the smallest circumference of a fucking artillery shell for a little World War II? Well, I, I did a little investigating of this story. This is not, it, it didn't have a primer. It didn't have gunpowder in it. It was just like a projectile. Okay. And I don't know caliper as opposed to millimeters right. as opposed to, you know, point whatever inches. But I mean, it's got to be, it's got to be three, three and a half. <laughs> yeah. And you, you know, certainly do sound like someone who's been investigating I this story. I certainly have. <laughs> My thing would be like, um, Okay, so how did this happen? Uh, well, I was just in my garage organizing, and I tripped and landed on it, and it went up my ass. And my question would be, why is it slathered with so much water-soluble lube? Because I've maintained some vintage artillery shells. That was never part of the regiment. Yeah. Water-soluble lube was not what we used on those. Good luck reselling it now. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, bomb, that's got to be bad for the bomb squad, you know what I mean? Because when you join the bomb squad, it's because you watched a bunch of movies like uh, Executive Decision, yeah. Hurt Locker, you know, you're there, hot chick was dabbing yep. your brow, you know what I mean? Which wire is it? And like, Don't rush me, dab the brow, you know, you get the... <laughs> Get the uh, diagonal cutters out, okay. And then, uh, you know, people go like, I've, di I've, 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 uh, I've disarmed millions of these, but it's been a long time, man. And, but you wouldn't picture going to a hospital and pulling a shell out of a crazy guy's asshole. That right. was not, it's never been a part of any bomb movie I've ever seen. This isn't in the book. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also, dude, I mean, all right, I, I guess it could it could explode. Yeah. Take uh, out the whole hospital. Do you think they had that shield with the viewing port in it like they walked up on it? Because that would be part of protocol, right? Well, much like the herd locker, maybe they sent in the robot. Or the oh. dog. Oh. Yeah. By the way, protocol for me pulling a bowling pin out of someone's ass would involve that shield. <laughs> it would all involve the blast shield. That's right. And the robot. And the robot. <laughs> this might hurt I a had, little. <laughs> I had a movie idea. I did it on Kimmel a million years ago, which was uh, called Bomb Squad, where the guy's partner was actually blown up his longtime bomb squad mm -hmm. partner, and replaced with one of those robots with artificial intelligence and downloaded with his personality. Ooh. And now became this kooky cop buddy sure. bomb well, squad. Knows all the inside jokes. That's right. Yeah. I, I don't have a punchline that's for that. End. That's all I remember. That's, that's, all I, that's all I recall. Oh, Bob, you old son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I don't know, again, how you remove this, but I... I would tend to just want to jump on his stomach. <laughs> I mean, I certainly... I'd be like, all right, I'd come back to the van because you guys would be in the van. 
And I'd be like, all right, I need the blast shield. Got it. I need, uh, I need uh, gloves to go to the elbow. I need, uh, I, need, I need the industrial barbecue okay. tongs. It's already here. Three day laborers. Yep. I'm going oh, to the quiz notes. <laughs> all right, send them in. <laughs> <laughs> Call me when, uh, when, when, the, when the coast is clear. <laughs> now, look, I, I was thinking about this story. If you, if you had a bunch of artillery shells and they were stored facing the sky yeah. and you did trip in your garage, it, it could go up your ass. Well, you'd, you'd have to be garaging naked. <laughs> <laughs> well... The thing is meant to go through four inches That's of hard steel <laughs> on, a, on a tiger tank. If it you're wearing the get through your dockers. If you're wearing the mesh shorts that Gina bought today, yeah. That's true. Yeah. You would be the person who invented the shelf couldn't get through the dockers. Would, I feel like they'd be failing us as a, That's a, good as point. a nation. But, but what are the odds? I mean, and everyone says it. Like, what? Why don't we move right, on? You're excuse? right. You're right. But shouldn't we give? You're welcome. These people the benefit of the doubt. No! Well, all I'm saying is that, look, uh, you know, 200 times a year, somebody trips and gets a piece of rebar put no, through the no. rib cage. We don't go, on purpose? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> like you didn't see the rebar sticking up from the cinder block? No. Give me a break. <laughs> somebody wants attention. This, uh, this old story again. You'd make a horrible ER nurse, Gina. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> So Here we go, always, always with the drama. Yes, I, I'm willing to entertain the thought that one could get something lodged in one's ass by mistake. I will entertain it. Okay, I don't mean to be all he who smelt it dealt it, but I'm just saying, look for a Google News alert in the next month or two about Adam getting something accidentally stuck up his ass. <laughs> a little preemptive for uh, the plans he has for the new year. I only collect things that are wider than they're long <laughs> for this specific reason. Good luck getting Tom Cruise's racing helmet up your ass. I could barely crack the cheek with that. Th I mean, who knows? Technically, isn't anything that gets irretrievably lodged in your ass a mistake? Yes, I, I agree. I, no, I, I, I agree. Is it, yeah. but, but the question is, is did he do it volitionally? Did uh -huh. he do it Did he do it on purpose? And like I said, well, first off, I don't judge. <laughs> Clearly. Because You're not all, known for it, no. No, but it's, it's like uh, Missy Misdemeanor Elliot yeah. said. You know, we're all God's creatures. <laughs> we cannot judge one another when things get wedged in one's anus. Right. And I'm, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. That's all. You're Gina, a better man than I. Gina, file this away for when you need, like, a day off in March. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to Florida. Uh, oh, I, I don't know if this is going to be a man you don't like or you're fucking in love with. So let's find out. Mm. A Florida man uh, was super pissed at his neighbor because of the way they parked. So he um, fired a flamethrower at the car. Oh. Mm. But wait, there's more. Andre Abrams is facing three counts of felony aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after spraying flames at a car with three teenagers sitting inside. Side. Nice. Uh, then continuing to shoot fire as they tried to flee. <laughs> Ashley Ganey, the mother of one of the teens, told the cops that Abrams frequently used the weapon, which, by the way, apparently can be purchased online, to scare people away from the property. The 57-year-old suspect admitted that he shot the flamethrower at the car but denied targeting the kids. He told the police, this family, how can I say this, the worst thing that could ever happen to a neighborhood. <laughs> They've had issues with other residents and it needed to be brought to light. No problem pun intended. Wow. I added that last part. <laughs> well, I, I have thoughts. The, the thing about, I learned this, uh, so if you buy yourself like a bat or something for protection, you know what I mean? Or, or like a cane that you could strike somebody with, yeah. a knife, brass knuckles, or you know something like that. You don't need to use it. Like, you're not compelled to use it you unless to never use somebody it. attacks right. you. 
but there are certain other things like flamethrowers, <laughs> which you will definitely want to use because it's super cool, yeah. you know? So how long could you sit on a flamethrower before your wife was like, oh, Jesus Christ, a moth got in the I'll handle it. Right Let me get, help me up with this thing. Help me up with the tank. I mean, how I long? Like the, the bottom of a shoe will work, honey. Yeah. Oh, let me get the flame. Oh, there's oh, some cobwebs uh, up around oh. the... Uh, yeah, I'll just get the broom. Let me get the flamethrower. <laughs> That's right. Goddamn silverfish. They never take a day off, do they? All right, get that flamethrower. Oh, this junk mail. Yeah. <laughs> Our daughter has a zit. All right. <laughs> we get that flamethrower on. We're out. You want to use it. I, I look, I, back in the day when we were doing the man show. Yeah. Cousin Sal, Jimmy's cousin, got one of those tasers. Mm -hmm. A taser's one of those things, too. You can't just fucking let it no. sit in your glove box. He tased everyone <laughs> there. He, it wasn't just us in the writer's room. He tased, like, the receptionist. If someone <laughs> came by to refill the vending machine, everyone is, like, tasing it. So the thing about the flamethrower yeah. is it's going to be used. It has to be used. It it's, compels you yeah. to use it. The sweet siren song of the flamethrower. Yes, yes. Yeah. You'd have to. All right. With this, I'm 5149. Who's to blame? I got to see the parking job. Yeah, I got to see, see the parking true. job, too. That's right. right. Well, you are very forgiving to the man with the artillery shell up his ass, so let's see how you feel about this guy. Let's not get the flamethrower guy and the <laughs> artillery shell guy together at the same barbecue, because that's... <laughs> That's an accident waiting to happen. It's true. Well, don't invite this guy either. Uh, doctors in Lithuania were shocked when a patient came in uh, with about two pounds of nails, screws, and bolts in his stomach. Mm. The man went to the hospital complaining of abdominal pain, which I believe, explained to the doctors that his drinking habit uh, made him start swallowing metal. An x-ray revealed a pile of hardware in his stomach, unsurprisingly internal damage. He underwent a three-hour surgery surgical procedure to remove all of it. He's in stable condition, but... Maybe he, he was a guy, maybe he was just like going, maybe he's at the bar and he goes uh, to the bartender, I'll have a screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy's like, we're out of vodka. All right, give me a drywall nail. <laughs> <laughs> a rusty nail? And maybe the nail. guy just was literal about yeah, it, exactly. you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Dr. Drew's talked about this like maybe not the fucking nails and screws, but like women who will eat like couch stuffing and yeah. chalk. Yeah. Dirt. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There. Well, there's also a thing where people want to eat dirt yeah. and, and charcoal yeah. briquettes right. and stuff like that. And they're iron you're, deficient. Yeah, you're deficient like of something, and uh, you you eat it. But I, I mean, this guy's just drunk. And, Incredibly and iron shit. deficient. Right. Right. <laughs> All right, well, a former space engineer, his name's Benson Tsai, he's spent the last hey, few years... Hey, can we yeah. say this? Can, can each... Can every hospital have a sort of think-about-it room? <laughs> you know, now I'm, I'm just piggybacking on a lot of people. Are like, look, man, if people don't want to get vaccinated, they shouldn't go to the front of the line and be taking up hospital beds. All right. Well, let me extend that thought. Yeah. Somebody shows up with an artillery shell in their asshole or belly full of drywall screws. Yeah. Meanwhile, your kid over there has uh, got a horrible lawnmower accident. He's bleeding out in the lobby of the hotel, and this guy gets fucking first dibs over the doctor. Maybe just a room. Yeah. We could put, like, an aquarium in it. It doesn't have to be torture. Right. You know? And I, well, the ones with the turtles, because I feel that's even more relaxing. Those are fun. And, and you yeah. reflect more. When you see a turtle, you... The, the sign over the door says, emergency, question mark. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And we just put you in there, and you can just think about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We'll get to the uh, the kids that had the horrible accident with the skateboard, and then, if time permits, and you've thought about it enough, we can come in and remove God knows what from your asshole. I think that's fair. So think about it, Ron. Yeah. yeah. But again, not the fish. I want the turtles. You want, like, the terrarium. Well, I like it when the turtles swim, but okay. you can't okay. fill it all the way to the top. Right. You know what I mean? It's got to have a little yeah, yeah, yeah. Need a little air. But I, I find, I think that relaxes people with, with stuff in their ass more <laughs> than, like, a clownfish would or something. And by the way, I don't want to insult the people. Right. 
It's not funny. Just want them to think about it. That's right. All right. So this guy who was a SpaceX engineer, he spent the last few years developing a robotic pizza restaurant, and it's coming to L.A., so Mm. come on down. Stellar Pizza's revolutionary new pizza machine transforms raw pizza dough, fresh toppings, into a freshly baked pizza in under five minutes. This thing can produce a pizza every 45 seconds, and the product is more consistent than the old school pizzeria. If everything goes according to plan, he and his team of 25 other SpaceX employees will be rolling out stellar pizza across the country. Stellar. Well, see what he did there. It, it is weird. We talk about this every day. Like we just sit around and think about ways to make people fatter. Yes. And innovate to make more carbs to be consumed. Also, you know, they're going to be one of these things where they're going to have the robot made pizza, and then there's going to be one where Giuseppe from the old world did the whole hand toss, and everyone's going to swear Giuseppe from the old world is pizza's better, but we're going to sit them down. Blind taste taste test. test. Yeah. I'll put the, and they won't be able to tell, which will be sad, (laughs) but maybe it's also like the same blowhards who think they know the difference with the different brands of vodka. Mm. They, they do not. I know there's several in this room. Like, I know the difference between Kamchatka and Stoli. Oh, that's why I'm a Grey Goose man. But you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I will say, my, uh, I, I, I had a... Uh, I had a blowhard uh, buddy, Danny Two Sheets. He was one of those vodka, you know, he's a Stoli yep. guy. He has his own mm-hmm. thing. And we, we had like a flight delayed an airport once. And I said, fuck, I'm tired of this shit. I said, we're going to the bar. Going to set up four shots of vodka. I went four different types. And you fucking tell me if you can tell the difference. And to be fair to him, he just went, ah, oh, fuck it. I can't do that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> It took some fortitude to yeah. do that. Yeah. So they're going to start um, rolling out. Robot pizzas. Well, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if we're going to need this, but we're all going to have robots, and they're going to need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this works. Yeah, Maybe a yeah. robot pizza would be good for them. Yeah, I don't think that's what it... Is that four robots? No. You said robot pizza. I did. That was my mistake. The robots make the pizza that the humans eat. Right. But you say robot pizza, like when you go dog food, Right. Uh, that's four dogs. <laughs> You're saying robot pizza. I heard robot pizza, dude. I, I heard robot pizza, too. That is four I apologize robots. to all of you if that wasn't clear. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen. Uh, people with no skills... You're fucked. <laughs> because. <laughs> this country, if you're skillless 200 years ago, you just go like, I'm skillless. And they go, fine, we're building a railroad. Yeah. You'll, be busy. You'll be busy for the next 55 years. <laughs> Because we had a bunch of shit you could do for people who were essentially yeah. donkeys. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I did the shit myself. I dug on a construction site. I, 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 it is, it is even, even on a construction site, like a walk around, I'll see people are building in the neighborhood. You know, I'll just walk the dog, stop, look at the building, tell the guy he's fucked up the nailing schedule on the <laughs> sheer wall. <laughs> Doesn't look like fucking six on the seams and 12 in the field for me. Pull one. Let me make sure it's a 10 penny ring shank because they look like eight sinkers from here. Anyway, just a neighbor. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> Notice you use the eight penny sinkers on the Tico clips too. That is not approved. <laughs> anyway, sure be a shame if I called the inspector. <laughs> Are you going to finish that sandwich? That's basically what I do in my neighborhood. Right. You, know? you threaten the workers. But, but when I... And they always answer the same way. Kay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm known as the chupacabra of La Cunata. <laughs> but... <laughs> but... I will say this. When, when I worked on these construction sites, when I started in like the mid, 
early 80s. I was digging the ditches, you know, everything was just hand dug, mm -hmm. drywall, just guys, you know, throwing it up and just carrying the sheets and stacking whatever. Go around now. They got the little diggers, they got the excavators, they got the mini ones, got the little the tank tread on it, they got all the shit, they're using the skip loader thing, they're moving all the plywood. Like it's it's already much less labor intensive. Yeah. Now the guys that are up on the roof with the high point saw who are doing the Diaframing on the on the roof and sheathing it. Those guys have a skill set, but we don't need the donkeys to bring the sheets up one at a time. That's what I used to do. So if you don't have a skill, you're fucked, Americans. Get your shit together. And we ain't going to solve this. Because the thing is, is, they go, well, all right, these people are unemployable because we have all this machinery on job sites and we have the robot pizza, pizza now. Yeah. What do we do with the 18 and a half year old stoner? The government's take is, let him go home and we'll give him a check. Oh, it'll be awesome when he <laughs> ODs on fentanyl at 400 pounds in seven months. Please. <laughs> Got to get a trade, people. Gotta get a job and fight to keep it. And that's why I need your vote. These clip killers coming to this country and they think they own the place. I didn't even know what we were talking about, but <laughs> I gotta bring up our ball puller. So let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it, I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina. That was the news with Gina Grad. Ruzba, Ruzba, are uh, born in Iran. Gina Grad and Bryan, everybody. Bye, Put your hands thank together. You. Ruzba, he is uh, born in Iran. He's a dental technician. Woo, and... Uh, he wrestled in high school. Oh, come on up, Ruzva. Hey. How Good, how are you? Here's your mic. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Click you Killer doing, is actually Good. my, that was my nickname. What's that? Click Killer was my Clint nickname. Click Killer in high school? In high school, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> CK, get over here. <laughs> Got some ladies I want to introduce you to. <laughs> so, uh, Ruzma, uh, dental technician. Oh, you, right. Yeah, you got, yeah, uh, you yeah, got some got slack it. there? I got it. That's why Gina was doing this. So, yes, yeah, speak, yeah. speak directly into yes, that microphone, yes. please. You good? Yeah, yeah let, I got it. You can let the cord go. It's, you're going to trip me. There we it. go. There you it. go. Uh, so you're at home, but you're working. So uh, the breakthrough, the game changer in the tooth technology is going to be 3D printing? 3D printing, yeah. You don't need me anymore. Oh, oh good. You can <laughs> download it on your phone. Download your dentures on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> you can be out front of the robotic pizza shop trying That's to get right, a gig. Yeah. Like, you just be Handing like, out flyers, ironically. Yeah, like, Somebody's got to oil and blow those robots, <laughs> or you're going to have a strike on your hands. <laughs> Well, at some point, the, the robots are going to have to, like, unionize and stuff. <laughs> well, it is, it is true. I mean, the, I've already heard um, some politicians talking about this, which is if everything's mechanized and nobody is working, then where's the tax base coming from? And they're literally saying, we got to tax the robots. Okay. Well, if you think, of, think, think like a politician, if you can. <laughs> And then, you know, put a hose up your mouth and, and down your mouth and wash it all out. But what I'm saying is, is you had a job where you had 20 employees and they all paid taxes. Now you have three employees and 17 robots not paying taxes. So think like a fucking politician in a, uh, for a second. They're going to do it. Absolutely. So you came here from Iran. Yep, uh, we did, yeah. Does anyone go to Iran? <laughs> <laughs> we try not to, but sometimes What's they make us. What's going on over there in Iran? Oh, it's super chill. We just kind of, it's like a vacation spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does, uh, yeah, because I'm thinking uh, with the Christmas vacation coming up, I'm thinking either Napa, Napa. or Iran. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you say Iran. I think, yeah, I think our governor is a lot uh, more lenient than Oh, yours. really? Is he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, 
is uh, who's who's running the, that place? Honestly, now? I don't know. You don't know. I give a shit. <laughs> Fuck them. I'm turn, basically a white guy. Turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> How the ladies like you? Do you try to pass your off as uh, pass yourself off as like a better nationality, like Italian or something like myself? Yeah, I do. You know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. you could do that. I, I do. I go. I'm. A, my name is Ruzabe. Yeah, you get. <laughs> <laughs> you get one of those Italian horns. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about that Ford v Ferrari movie and how uh, Ferrari got fucked. That's right. <laughs> All right, you want to pull some uh, yes, balls sir. there? Which way do I go? This way? Well, let's see. It's, it's always controversial. I think right, we should... I, 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 let's, let me try. Oh, uh, uh, there it is. Oh, Mike. My, uh, Mike. That works. You're facing Mike. it the wrong direction, Mike. It goes the other direction. I yelled at him last night. Yeah, I'm the, sure you did. The, you didn't fix it. It goes, it goes <laughs> this way. All right, go ahead. All right, all right. Let's get... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pete, you had to witness this, people. <laughs> All right, what do you All got? Right, first word is love. Love. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a. I'm not a fan. I don't like. You know what I don't like? I don't like unconditional love. I feel like you got to earn my love, ladies. <laughs> I feel like it's all based on your actions. Who the fuck loves unconditionally? I don't. I don't. I don't trust these people. I don't like them. You know what I mean? I got kids. If one of them did something that was way out of line, I wouldn't even support her. <laughs> well, what are the chances the boy's got to do it? He's a saint. Come on. I literally. I had this conversation backstage uh, last night in between shows. Uh, I always call I always call my kids, you know, in between the shows because the late late shows too uh, too late to call them after, so I'll call them in between. So I call my son, who opened his Christmas presents and wanted to thank me for his iPhone 12 that he got, and he just kept thanking me over and over again. And then I called my daughter, and she's like, "Remember we talked about a convertible Mercedes?" <laughs> And I was like, uh, I remember you talking about it. Yeah. I don't see anything in the driveway. That's right, because it's not there. And then she's like, well, good news. We're going to Chicago for eight days, so maybe you could rustle something up by the time I get back. <laughs> Was that just like your childhood, or did your dad get you the Mercedes hard top? Or the, oh, the retractable hard top, probably. Not the, not, not the soft top, Yeah. <laughs> My dad, Adam, my dad got me a donkey when I was... Really? Yeah, back home. <laughs> you Iranians with your donkeys for transportation. You kill me with that shit. I don't like, uh, I don't like unconditional love. Not a fan of unconditional love. I have a lot of conditions with my love. And I don't like the fact that everything is being made with love. And, you know, when I was a kid... You know, maybe we could stretch our imaginations a little. Like, oh, mommy, bake these Toll House cookies with love. And by the way, I, it's not an ingredient, but you get this sim symbolism, right? It's symbolic, mommy. Uh, if, if dad, however, ever bakes you Toll House cookies with love, that means he beat off into the bowl. <laughs> so you should know that. <laughs> know that going in. I'm just here to inform. <laughs> so do not eat dad's Toll House cookies <laughs> if they're made with love. <laughs> but now you can't even buy a fucking Subaru without being notified that Subarus are made with love, everybody. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's an all-wheel drive vehicle made to transport lesbian couples. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with love. Oh, love. Like, oh, when I was a kid, I'd watch the TV. They'd talk about cars. They'd talk about, like, bonderized steel, and they'd have their powertrain warranty. Remember, it was like, you know, 30,000-mile engine and powertrain, 100,000-mile rust-proofing, MSRP starts at, you know, $6,000, and then they'd go into all the different, you know, payment plans and the 2.7% financials, all the shit. And now it's just a lesbian couple with their dogs in the back, talking about love. 
we're gonna go adopt another dog. I went to, I, I've told you guys this before, I, oh, some of you weren't in the room, but I went to, I, so as long as I have you now. I went to an auto show in like Philadelphia and they had all the different cars and all the different displays and all the other things and Subaru just had a puppy farm where you could adopt dogs. Don't give me the awe, bitches. You're playing right into their hand. <laughs> Subaru makes Outbacks or, you know, Foresters or whatever for lesbians. And then in Japan, they make attack helicopters to kill people. Yeah. They're a big fucking company that makes a lot of shit for the military to blow up a lot of people who look different than them. <laughs> so don't buy this fucking love shit. <laughs> or maybe Subaru keeps it going. Like maybe when they're selling these uh, attack helicopters to allied countries, they're like, you know, we made the Apache killer with love. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's got a thermo-guided heat sinking sidewinder with love missile, you know, that'll... <laughs> it'll penetrate seven stories into a bunker and kill all the inhabitants. I mean, with love. I mean, obviously, there's much love. But anyone need a puppy or... No? <laughs> Fuck their love shit. All right, let's try. Let's try another one. I think you, you turn this around. Yeah, you, you see, see, you are a technician, my friend, literally. I have guys come up there to spin it, spin Forever. it, nothing's going, it's perpetual. But you, you have the eye of a, of a, of a dental technician. You know precision. <laughs> You know, precision. You are the, uh, you're the modern day Moyles, you know what I mean? You're precision. <laughs> All right, this one, this Hold one on, says. Hold on, there's a guy yeah. wearing a hunting shirt up here. Moyle. Moyle. That's, a, that's a, the Jewish fella that cuts the foreskin off. <laughs> he's just, he's wearing a kind of shirt that screams, I don't know what a Moyle is. He's got a... Did you know what a moil was? No. no. <laughs> but you are familiar with the phrase get her done? <laughs> I know my crowd. I know my crowd. <laughs> All right, let's do another All one. All right, this one says uh, balls. Balls. That's yeah, one of my favorite words. Yeah, I like balls. Um, I like that. Uh, I like that things take a lot of balls. But if you think about taking big balls, like I go, that guy's got big balls. That guy's got brass balls. It takes a lot of balls. That guys do that all the time. At a certain point, about the 75th time you're talking about the guy's nutsack, it gets a little homoerotic. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can we talk about his fucking biceps for a change? Or maybe just it's a mindset. You know what I mean? It's always, I mean, that guy has fucking huge huevos, dude. I like the only, by the way, the only, most guys, most of the super straight guys are always talking about balls. That guy's got brass ones, man. That guy's got nuts, man. That guy's Hey, that guy's got balls. The only Spanish word they know is huevos because it means balls, basically. I mean, it means eggs, but because it's not balls ranchero, it's, it's eggs. It's eggs ranchero, but in, in their culture, these are your eggs, you know what I mean? And so a lot of guys go, that guy's got big ones, man. That guy's got brass ones. But, and it always means the guy is... Um, uh, he's, he's, he speaks his mind. He doesn't run from a fight, right? He'll confront somebody. You know, this guy in the street swinging around a machete and Frank went over there and fucking got right. That dude's got balls. But and there's always big balls. There's always big, giant balls. This guy's got big, giant balls. But if you really think about it, <laughs> if you had giant balls, you would be very vulnerable in a street fight. That is exactly the wrong guy you want rushing to the fray. You want no balls guy coming in groin first. What you got, homeless guy with the machete? <laughs> you think I'm scared of those steel toe boots? No, I am not. 
big balls guy means big target groin guy, and that guy is easily taken down. So maybe we should just shift it to, well, that guy's got small balls. <laughs> I fucking, I, there was an Antifa guy on a horse. He punched him, man. Frank's got small balls, dude, man. Right. I don't know why his name is Frank, but he's got small ones, man. It's fucking garbanzo beans down there, dude. Don't fuck with that guy. He'll fucking kick you right in the balls and laugh, man. Your stupid huge ball. Wait, talking to the microphone, would you? <laughs> Run your stupid huge ball. Yeah, yeah you yeah. pussy. <laughs> now, what else with balls? I don't like when people spell it with a Z. <laughs> I don't like anything with a Z. I don't like dogs with a Z. I don't like cats with a Z. Knock the fucking Z. All right, white people knock the Zs off. Black people knock the lil off. Just write the whole fucking. Put a couple of T's in there, would you please? I don't need the lil. Fucks me up. Do I say the word little Wayne or do I go lil Wayne and sound like the whitest guy on the planet? You know Lil Kim, don't you? She's hanging around Lil Wayne. <laughs> Meanwhile, Frank got huge balls, man. <laughs> huge. You haven't called Lil Balls. No, no, man. <laughs> He's got huge balls. All right, put your hands together for uh, Roosba up here. <laughs> You guys have been a uh, fantastic little audience <laughs> tonight. And uh, until next time, Sam Crow for Roosevelt, Gina Grad, and Bald Brian. Say it. <laughs> Mahalo. Filled a hamper full of cliches yes. and yeah. just sort yeah. of scattered That's them on the ground. Yes. yes. You're all powerful. We're all. I don't buy any of that. First off, I look at myself as better than most all of you. <laughs> Most that leaves a couple of you with the option of thinking I'm not talking about you, but I am talking about you because when I say most, I mean all, but I still say most. <laughs> <laughs>